Folks, we are back. We are here in New Windsor. What is this? It's, it's amazing. We're here. And today we're going to be working on a project I've been talking about for a while but not doing, which is the lake community. So this lake is by that amusement park we built in episode 38, I believe. Uh, I've been meaning to work over here for a while. We end up building sort of an upper middle class neighborhood over here. To upper middle class to upper class like we have some really nice houses in a lot of places some really stupid McMansions but there are some cool little houses like this Tudor house here at the Cape Cod and stuff like that I use a lot of false lucidities houses and then a bunch of other different creators um, but you'll see later on you know the context for where this is but if you know where the amusement park is you probably know where this is so yeah so first of all um, I want to talk about live stream plans. I want to live stream some New Windsor soon. Uh, I don't know when this will be. Maybe I've already done it by the time this has gone out. Uh, but I need to I, I need to replace basically all of the uh, houses on the map that are near downtown. Because remember, recently I did a live stream where I went in and I replaced all of the houses with new asset editor houses. And I did so because triple decker houses came out that were just sort of a lot more realistic than what I was using before. But then recently, even more, actually not even recently, just right after I replaced all of them, like even better triple deckers that I really wanted to use that really fit what I was going for came out. So we've got like some really diverse triple deckers that I want to place and I can't not place them. So we're going to have to redo the, you know, but it'll be a nice therapeutic live stream where we talk about random stuff and maybe we can have people on and just have conversations it'll be cool uh, so that'll be soon I think I can do it in one episode I'll try to get the asset editor part of it done before the stream because uh, I don't really have too many houses to work on in the asset editor uh, and then we'll just go in and replace everything in you know in the game or in game rather uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way but uh, what else so okay the main thing I want to talk about here is the map theme was released um, for New Windsor. The map theme that I've been using in the series uh, for a long time. Uh, I think I've been using some version of this for most of the series. Um, so a lot of you have been asking about this, uh, this map theme. So it's, it's an edit of a bunch of different um, textures from a couple creators. So the the asphalt and pavement textures are like 100% by me because I couldn't find anything that I really liked. Um, I really needed really you know, worn pavement and worn asphalt because it's the northeast. So you, you gotta have that uh, worn um, worn concrete, worn asphalt. Um, so I, I couldn't find anything that I really liked in terms of texturing for that for what I specifically wanted to go for so I made some stuff myself with trial and error uh, the other custom ish textures are the oil texture which is the leaves ground texture that you see me use all the time um, and that allows me to efficiently place autumn leaves without actually placing them uh, so use you know, extra landscaping tools to make that work uh, and then the other texture is the cliff texture which is a grayscale and I think slightly like contrast edited maybe version of the springwood cliff texture i initially used the springwood cliff texture um you know just in its normal form but it was it was you know california looking and really you know it, it was too um dry uh, and I, I wanted actual uh stone cliffs if that makes makes sense like gray stone cliffs and i really liked the texture itself and the normal texture for it so i ended up going with that uh, but then in terms of the other textures, the water texture that you see is just so wonderful here is the uh, Springwood water texture, the foam, and the normal texture. That's wonderful. So thank you so much to Ronix for letting me use, I mean, a lot of different textures from the Springwood theme. Uh, and then the grass is from Springwood. I didn't really need to edit it. It's perfect for the color that I want for this series, which is slightly, slightly um, yellowish because it's... You know, getting a little bit um, late into the fall in New Windsor, and that's what happens to grass. Um, but it, not too, not too, um, not too yellow or brown because it's still grass um, after all. And then the ruins texture. Oh yeah, that, the ruin texture. I also did this. It's sort of an edited texture. It's like a combination of the. Um, oh yeah, and the, so the oil texture that I said was basically a quasi-custom texture. So that's the sp Springwood grass texture combined with some leaves textures that Ronix released from his actual leaf decals. 
and then I edited that, and then I did a similar thing with the, the, um, uh, what's it called? The, uh, ruins texture that you'll see sort of on the sides of the roads and stuff. Um, cause I had been using the one from San Minato, which looked really nice, but, uh, the creator from that map theme has not been on Steam in, like, 50 days, so I couldn't ask them for permission to, you know, uh, use it in the finished map theme. So I decided to just, uh, make a... I did not make my own, but sort of work off of what Ronix has done for Springwood and then use the leaves texture for it because, you know, wanted some more leaves in there. And I think it looks great because uh, with a ruined texture like that, that's uh, basically an area that's not really, um, not really swept or anything by street sweepers. So there, there might be some leaves still on there and um, you can see them if you notice. And uh, it, it's a good color. It works for me. Um, so then the, there's that and basically everything else. Um, oh, yeah, the, the ore texture is f By creative decks from the Clara theme and the sand textures also from the Clara theme uh, And those are wonderful. The rest is basically just Springwood That was I went on for a long time about that. Sorry, but yeah I just wanted to thank the creators of those map themes so creative decks and Ronix Thank you so much for you know letting me use uh, your textures uh, in the theme because I am I'm really bad at texturing myself and you know I, I I can only make the pavement and asphalt texture and uh, further than that I'm really bad with the tiling and stuff so thanks for letting me use your textures is the real basis of this theme um, but yeah, so that's in the workshop, so if you want an autumn theme, just search, search up autumn theme and you should be able to find it on the workshop. I think it's somewhere at the top of the workshop right now. Like, I'm I'm recording this on the 5th, the, yeah, the 5th of September, and it's currently at the top of the workshop for the week, and it's like climbing the you know, top for the past three months, so you should be able to find it pretty easily. Uh, it, should, it should still be up there. Uh, and then, yeah. Uh, hopefully you really like it. I I've been meaning to release it for a while. It's like my Roads United theme that took forever to release, but it's finally out and uh, I'm happy with the final form. This is basically what I was aiming for with the Sodom theme. Uh, it really just, it, it works. Uh, it clicks for me. Uh, I'm very happy with it. So hopefully you enjoy it and hopefully you get some good use out of it. So last time I butchered the name of this lake, but uh, I'm gonna try again. So last time I called it Kenobi Lake, uh, and then there's Kenobi Lake Park, which I called it. But I, I, I forget what people told me it actually was, but I'm assuming it's Canopy Lake and Canopy Lake Park. If I'm wrong again, you're gonna have to correct me, and I'll try to correct myself in the next video we work on, uh, you know, the lake in. Uh, but for now, that's what I've got for you. So, uh, Canopy Lake, I think, is what we're working on, or is what we're basing this off of. And it's in New Hampshire, it's got this huge amusement park right next to it, and we built the amusement park in a previous episode. Now we're working on a, you know, community near that amusement park, uh, which is nice and upper middle class, all individual developments generally, and it's, you know, it's, it's a nice place to live. It's not as tacky as suburban California, or dumb McMansion developments with one acre apiece. Other places in New England are probably a mile from here. I'm sure there's one of those a mile from what we're basing this off of in New Hampshire because, you know, it had there has to be. Uh, but this is a nice place to live. I like this. You know, listen, it, it's, it's nice to have, you know, a lake and a boat. Wonderful. It's a beautiful, tranquil place. But uh, we're going to have to build a marina because, obviously, boats can't be in the water all year round. Uh, and, uh, I guess people are gonna have to take their boats out pretty soon because it's late autumn. Um, so I, maybe I should actually reduce the amount of boats that are on these docks because I put boats on basically every dock outside of these houses, but that might not be realistic because, once again, this is, uh, the autumn, late autumn. 
Uh, another thing I don't do is really detail that much. I place trees and some fences in between the houses. That's about it. Maybe some patios. Not too much more. And this is the most all detail in this series. I don't really go any further than this. Uh, but yeah, uh, once again, we gotta keep the efficiency going. So this seems like a wonderful time to showcase a city here. Uh, we're gonna go with Emberwood City, which is a project by Ultra Jesse. It's a Chicago-inspired city. First of all, right off the bat, I'm gonna say that other than, I think, dynamic resolution, um, you're really nailing the graphics mods here uh, to, the, to the creator of this. Like, wow, the graphics mods are perfect. Perfect contrast, perfect everything. But there is a lot of, you know, like, it's pretty... Um, like, there's bad anti-aliasing anti here, meaning you need some dynamic resolution. If you got a bad computer, I understand it, but you can do Shift F12 to increase the actual quality of your screenshots without increasing your monitor or anything. Um, so do that if you can't use dynamic resolution. But other than that, the graphics mods are awesome. Obviously, this is just a very unfinished project, uh, but I will say I really like the map here, like the trees and the tree placement on the map looks very satisfying actually, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and I, I like what is being built here. Uh, I think this map is actually that map that Taser used for his, what was that series? His first series, uh, I forget the name of it, it's been so long. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty popular map a while ago. I'm pretty sure that's what it is at least. A really good map though, because the tree placement and the natural resources are great, but that's sort of an aside. But yeah, I mean, I, I do like this project a lot. This is, I, I can tell this is going to turn out great, uh, and I really hope to see more, more of it, uh, as the, you know, suburbs are expanded, or, I mean, there are no suburbs right now, so once, once they're built. Alright, so the next project here is going to be a 1950s American project by Bing Dynasty. So, I am going to be showcasing a pre-war American project pretty soon, but for now we've got this, I didn't realize that I had two different, you know, old American projects, but we've got this 1950s American project which I want to showcase first here, and it is really, really cool. So, I just want to say that, you know, Bing Dynasty has nailed the graphics mods game here, it, like, absolutely spectacular. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the road layout. The road layout is looking great. So this is a Detroit-inspired city, so you see a lot of these, you know, older 1950s themes. The automobile is, um, you know, sort of winning, uh, as it usually is in America, and you've got these crazy avenues that have probably just been built. Uh, obviously, when those are detailed, they'll probably be a lot more, um, you know, uh, old-styled, uh, hopefully with some American uh, road textures, but right now what we've got we've got this wow look at this we've got we've got a, a streetcar going through here in this entertainment district it looks great um i mean i wish it was as vibrant as you know this, this is sort of the beginning of the end for american urbanism you know the 1950s we're just about to get those freeways going uh, and I, I mean i'm not really seeing any freeways on the map, um, I think I see some in the distance, but not many, and they're very narrow. So that's pretty much what you've got for this type of um, this type of era. Uh, but now we're going to look at my favorite shots here. Look, look at the graphics mods in this shot, though. They're so good. Like I thought this was a photo when I saw this shot uh, with the two spires on those towers and station. It is. It's such a good shot. So. I mean, I just really appreciate good graphics mods, and I've been given uh, some shots with some really, really good graphics mods here. So, I love this project. I love how unique it is. I mean, I can't wait to showcase the uh, the pre-war American project. This is sort of a immediate post-war American project, which is really cool. We'll see what the the highway themes are in the older project as compared to this. Um, we'll see uh, what that's like. I'm assuming there'll be fewer freeways uh, in that. Uh, even though there are minimal amounts in here, but yeah, I love this project. It's a great job to Bing Dynasty. Alright, so we're here working on this little street um, here, and I mean, it's a commercial street. Uh, right by the lake. We're gonna end up working at a park as well in just a moment. This isn't really based on anything in specific, so I'm not gonna necessarily need to say much. I'm just building a commercial area. I'm trying to use, uh, you know, some 
a couple of you know high ends looking places for the shoreline and then I'm actually gonna place a strip mall right here so you know in the northeast you'll even have strip malls in some of these upper middle class areas that aren't even that you know, nice uh, it's, it's not too uncommon uh, same thing in California though so I mean yeah so it's a strip mall uh, it's got a laundromat drugstore stuff like that uh, okay I mean, I don't really need to talk about this. I'm just building a commercial street and detailing a commercial street. So let's talk about New Windsor. So New Windsor hasn't been uploaded for at two or three months before this. And that's obviously because I took a pretty long break and I, you know, had a lot of work to do this summer. But then when I got back, I just wanted to work on some Columbia City. But I popped back into New Windsor here because I really wanted to, you know, finish the map theme off, you know, put it on the workshop, so you guys could have it and then I decided to just work on the lake community finally because I'm putting it off for so long and it was finally time so we ended up doing that working on the lake community I don't know what we'll do next uh, I'm thinking of working on a, a university uh, with the new uh, not so new now uh, campus DLC assets because some of them are perfect for New Windsor I want to do one right by the ocean and I've also decided that the sort of New Windsor theme of having a old industrial city that's sort of deteriorating is not necessarily what I want want to continue going for because of the way I've ended up developing the city. Uh, I want it to be probably way less industrial than I thought it was going to be. It's going to it's going to be relatively low density industrial on you know this side of the river if that makes sense. I'll show you when we hop in game later which we are going to do which I don't think I've done in a new Windsor episode possibly ever. Hop in game. What? I mean, I've been doing that in Columbia City, it seems to be going down well, and I, I honestly didn't do it before, like the in-game you know, portions, because I thought it was a little bit, I don't know, it, I'm sort of a perfectionist, and it always feels like low quality uh, when, I'm, when I'm popping in-game and showing you what we've built, but it, when I watch videos, I want to see that anyway, if that makes sense. And I mean, I think most of you probably do as well. You want to see everything in perspective. It's like you're not the person creating the city, so you don't know what it's, you know, what the what the city looks like in perspective. So that makes sense. And I really have to um, try to try to accomplish that uh, by going in game more often in the videos. And I'm trying to do it every single video. And it also gives you guys more video to watch, which I know you like. And um, yeah, so, I mean, okay, so just generally with New Windsor, uh, I want to just say we're probably not going to have more than about 20 more episodes of New Windsor. I know that sounds like, wow, a lot, but I mean, you know, that means we're two-thirds of the way through the series, probably, maybe further. Um, as in, we're probably going to end up doing a couple of sort of um, keynote builds, if that makes sense. That's probably a really bad word to use for that, but like, you get, you get what I mean. So very uh, high profile builds like this late community where we really put in the detail work and it's gonna be very prominent in the cinematics throughout the series, uh, throughout the rest of the series rather. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a really high profile build for the series. Uh, very iconic, if that makes sense. We're gonna do a couple of those. I wanna work on like a national park-ish area. We really have to work on terraforming much of the exterior of the map um, the periphery of the map, I guess. There's no exterior uh, to the map because uh, it's a city skylines map. Um, you get what I mean. But I mean, yeah. So we've got work work like that to do. Uh, we've got more stuff to do by the shoreline near the city. Um, but I don't know how much more really unique stuff I could do. I've got a document I think with some uh, some stuff I want to work on. Uh, that I, I can refer back to as well. I mean, if you have suggestions for very unique Northeast style builds, that'd be great. Uh, we're not gonna build a huge harbor. I wanna, oh yeah, I wanna do a lobster wharf type thing by the wharves. That could be really cool. Uh, and we're gonna probably end up having the, you I know, mean, we got the light rail going again. I'm gonna end up having that terminate at the university that we built. Um, but I mean, other than that, I don't really have too many ideas for the rest of the series. Uh, we're just gonna be expanding the suburbs like crazy in some maybe live streams or something. I want to build uh, dumb commercial mall areas or something like that um, in different areas of the map. We've got a bunch of different stuff to do, but not too much at this point. Um, that's gonna be very unique, meaning we're gonna just be filling in a lot of space pretty soon. Um, so yeah, 10 to 20 episodes and New Windsor's gonna be gone, but 
Uh, that means more time for Columbia City. But yeah, anyway, let's hop in game, check out what we've just built, guys. What are we looking at right now? What could we be looking at right now? You know, astute viewers, but probably most viewers, know what we're looking at. This is New Belfast, the best part of New Windsor, in my in my humble estimation. Um, here's the neighborhood we worked on a couple of episodes ago, which I still really do like, uh, with all these high-density triple-deckers. Um, and we're going to end up doing a bunch of work near here soon. I want to build a hospital, and then we're going to end up building a university over here. Um, to put it in context, that's where that is on the map when compared with downtown. Uh, so, okay, this episode we worked all the way over here on this lake community um, next to the amusement park, and I'm very happy with um, what we accomplished. Obviously, it is not complete. We have a lot of work to do. Um, we've got this sort of park over here. It sort of looks a little bit weird from the side. But that's just because the tree uh, LODs, but we've got this park with some open space over here. I want to grab some, I think I have PPGs I can place. Um, to get people going over there and we've got like a little outdoor stage and it's a nice little community we've got a commercial area over here that we built uh, with uh, I mean we've got some like pubs and stuff over here I used some UK assets for that I, I hadn't used this one before which is really nice um, and then we have this other little grill here and then I placed a pier with a little diner on it because it's it looks cool um, so we've got that. We've got a little park over here. Um, it's like a dirt path, and it's a nice area. It's a nice place to live. It's not too pretentious. You know, you've got this, like, not too nice strip mall over here with, like, you know, the pizza place and barber shop and whatever. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a nice, it's a definitely a nice place to live, especially on this end of the lake. Um, you've got, I, I did not detail this house over here or any of this, but... Um, you've got all these dumb McMansions over here. Um, this guy's even got a barn. I like this house, though. That's pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, all these different houses have boats, generally. Uh, and they've got a decent amount of land. Um, I fenced off some houses, but not all of them. Uh, we've got this sort of British-looking house here, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Tudor house. Uh, another McMansion. Another McMansion. That's a cool shot right there with the amusement park in the background. Um, if you're wondering, I'm using the Shiko mod to get sort of this perspective here. Um, I'm pressing tab and it looks very nice. And then we've got this. And then you sort of go through the neighborhood. It's a it's a nice little street here. I very much like it. I used the asphalt road by uh, Arnold J. Rimmer for that. And so we've got this little gated house but because of course we, we need to. And we've got the wall rock we used. Um, and then this little house. It, it's a nice little community. Um, and I'm, I didn't add too much detail, but I'm sort of happy with how this turned out generally. We're going to have to go in here and add a bunch of houses around here. And then we're going to end up expanding because obviously we've got this gridded layout over here. We're going to have to integrate that as well. Um, we're going to have some level of residential density here. It's going to peter off, turn into low density residential or low, low density industrial. Um, and this sort of stuff like this is going to be what you're going to see from most of the map until I hit the building limit. But um, that's that. So that's the, what we built this episode. I'm very happy with it. Uh, we have another episode to do, but I'm probably not going to do it for a little while because I don't... I, maybe I'll do it in the next... Who knows? But uh, I want to probably go and work on other stuff. Like I want to build a university right here. I've been planning it for a little while, and I think it'd be a great spot to... Um, to just to place a nice university with the campus DLC uh, and the, the, this tram uh, road will end up going into the university will loop around so let's sh uh, let me show you the way the light rail is working now because I got it working again I changed the lines because I got a lot of feedback people basically told me to just have a straight line I wanted to add multiple light ra la yeah, light rail lines and have them go like all across the area but I ended up just wanting to do one that connects the university to the train station in downtown. And I'll show you how I did this. So, I mean, obviously, just as before, it sort of ends at this train station, which is totally overbooked, it looks like, and has only one platform in use for some odd reason. I don't know how to fix that. 
If somebody could help me, that'd be excellent. Uh, I don't understand functionality of anything in this game, so I mean, I could use some help on that front. Um, yeah, this one platform thing is causing some problems, as you can see. But there's that, so it goes through downtown, sort of along the river here. Uh, and it, I mean, look at that. We've got transit. This is amazing. Um, and then it sort of goes all the way through here, down this way. We've got this downtown park over here. Um, and then this is the last stop somewhere around here. Yeah, like right here is the last stop before you end up going through this way. God, this looks so realistic. Um, and then going under here, I actually detailed these, um, these sort of intersections here because before I had this avenue that had automatically, you know, placed medians on it um, at intersections. But then I ended up removing that because didn't have trams, obviously. And then now I've got these. God, this is really bad, but it's better than I'm gonna get with anything else. So that's how the lines are gonna look. Um, but yeah, yeah. And then this sort of goes under here. I detailed it fully, basically. Why are you guys here? I don't understand. Is there, there's no transit stop. You hitchhikers? Whatever. Um, and then we're gonna go through the interchange, which, I mean, it's such a cool interchange. Uh, and then we're gonna end up on the other side, and I detailed this end as well. Uh, and we end up over here. Uh, and over here is this, this one stop, uh, which is sort of the, the last stop in this area. Uh, you can sort of connect up to some of the neighborhoods in here um, and downtown New Belfast is going to be serviced by a stop that we end up having sort of this way. Um, so I, this used to be like a two lane highway but I replaced it with a sort of a normal road because wait, I have to remove parking there because you definitely should be able to park. Maybe I can add some white lines for cyclists as well, that could be cool. Um, very vibrant little area here. So the tram sort of goes off this way because when you go down here, you end up basically on the water in New Belfast. Um, and I don't want to do that. So I have the, the tram going through here and stopping at this hall of whatever sort. I guess it's like a, some sort of performance hall or exhibition hall or something like that. Uh, and has been repurposed many times. That's the idea with it. Um, it doesn't really have any parking though, that's the problem. But um, who needs parking? Actually, no, I guess this is the parking, but it's definitely not enough. Who needs parking mandates? Um, yeah, anyway, so we're gonna end up going down this way. Uh, we've got the theater here, which is obviously a big centerpiece. Uh, and I placed this elsewhere in the city as well. Um, and I really love this view right here with the mural uh, and then the tram coming down through here. It's just so good. I uh, play some graffiti over there. We got Dunkin' Donuts. I think we have a Dunkin' Donuts over where do we have? We have another Dunkin' Donuts over here because you know, New England. Um, God, this parking is really annoying, but like, I mean, it's just sort of realistic for America. Um, so then this ends up sort of ending up over here. We've got, I think, another stop somewhere around here. Yeah, right here. And this is the depot right now. But we're gonna change the depot and it's gonna end up going towards the university, which is gonna be over there. The depot will probably end up in some some area along the way. I don't know how we're gonna do that, um, where we're gonna place the depot, but we'll figure it out. And it's just gonna sort of terminate at the university. And it's just gonna be the one line and it'll go from there to there. A lot simpler, a lot more realistic. Uh, and I hope that sort of answers a lot of the concerns you guys had a lot of, about the, the light rail. Uh, see, listen, the problem was I had really weird infrastructure in this city. The way these, so if you look at this road right here, which theoretically should be a huge throughway, um, sort of goes through this way and then it sort of splits off and then doesn't really go anywhere. Um, so it's really hard to get light rail going through there. Um, and then over by the train station, the this road sort of dead ends, um, which I don't know if it's probably not very, very realistic, um, but this neighborhood's very weird anyway, so. Um, 
yeah, the, the point is it was really hard to implement uh, the infrastructure before. I wasn't really happy with how I ended up implementing it, but I'm much happier with this much simpler one line design, just one line going from downtown all the way to New Belfast over here. Um, and, and New Windsor is growing. Uh, we've probably got like 10 to 20 more episodes left, as I mentioned in the video. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it, it's, it's our autumn city. It's, it's so good. I, I just, I love this project. I will always love this project. And the final cinematic video, whenever that comes out, I mean, this is probably going to not even be done in 2019, but uh, whenever, it, whenever it's over, final cinematic video is going to be so sad. Um, but it's going to be, look at, look at the, the camp track. It's so good. Look at that. Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be so sad to let this series go when the time comes, but that's going to be a long time from now. For now, uh, I really do hope you enjoyed the episode. I don't know when the next episode will be, but if you enjoyed and you want to see more New Windsor more often, make sure to leave a like. It lets me know that you want to see more New Windsor, and it helps more people find New Windsor. Uh, you can subscribe if you're new around here, hit the bell icon, you know the deal. Don't miss a video, because you probably don't want to. Um, you could. If, if you want to watch the next video right now, um, you can go and support me at Patreon, just $1 a month, and you'll get access to every single new video before it comes out, right when the last video comes out, so go do that. And then you can follow me on Twitter, I post updates and motorist rants, or anti-motorist rants on there, um, it's a newer thing, but... And then you can follow me on Instagram where I post all of my best screenshots. Definitely do that. And that's about it. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.